I was always quite critical, self-critical. Even if I scored a hat trick, I'll be thinking about the ones I missed. You know, I think it's important to give yourself a pat on the back. But one small story I'll summarise. We lost in the semi-final of the FA Cup away at Everton about oh, 10, 12 years ago now. We got on the bus afterwards and I didn't speak the whole way home. And I was still in school then as well because I played for the first team when I was 14. I told my mum and dad I don't want to go to school. I was a nightmare. My t even my teammates were going, come on, Leon. And I literally couldn't speak to people. I was a, I'm not a bad loser, no, no. but I hate losing. And we yeah. lost in the semi-final of the FA Cup. And sometimes I used to think, like, when I signed for Chelsea from Arsenal, we get in the changing room after the game. And at Arsenal, we used to win everything. We were yeah. the best team. Yeah. And my teammates, some of them would be like, oh, let's go for something to go for a drink. Mm. Or let's go. I'm There's thinking, no such thing as a good loser. They're just a loser, aren't they? No, but yeah. how can people be thinking about going on a night out when you've just lost the game? Do you know what I mean? Why do you play football? If you don't care if you win, lose or draw, sure. what is the point in playing? And it used to blow but my mind. But I think mind. you have to get balanced because I used to have extreme reactions to losing and winning games and I learned that those two, imp the sort of, those two imposters like yeah. Roger Kipling suggests should be treated with the same sort of yeah. outlook because as, otherwise... As an owner. Yeah, because you get so disappointed and you get so elated and what you do is you try and find a balance. Mm -hmm. If you know that you've played well and the team have played well and they've gotten beaten by a better team... Then, then you can accept those things. If it's, if you've not played, well I missed a penalty in a game when I played in America, and I was. <laughs> well, like, it's your own fault, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but no, but I felt terrible. Yourself. Yeah, you I felt terrible. Yourself. Which leads me to Marcus Rashford. Now, this is everywhere today, and I'm looking at the Telegraph. Uh, incidentally, Simon, the Telegraph uh, did really well last night to the SJAs. So they, 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 there is a newspaper. Their sports section is flying. Marcus Rashford. Considering his future at Manchester United, um, and of course, he's not happy about uh, lack of game time. He started just two of United's past 11 Premier League matches. He's said to be growing increasingly frustrated by his lack of regular playing time under Ralph Ranić. And then we get more to it. Apparently, um, dismayed, particularly dismayed, to be omitted from the starting lineup in the 4 1 capitulation to City at the weekend. Whose fault is that, Leanne? The thing is, obviously, in the game the weekend, you know, Greenwood obviously is not playing. Martial's not there anymore. Cavani and Ronaldo, you'd expect him to have played. He would have expected himself. But I don't think Manchester United fans would have expected him to play. I'd rather I'd rather Elanga play. Because at least with Elanga, he has a bit of fight. For me, Marcus Rashford has only got himself to blame. Because he hasn't been good for a, no a while now. You know, I said on the show about three months ago, maybe, that I felt like it was time for him to move on. I did. And I got a lot of pelters from people saying... Do you still oh, think that? Yeah, I do. Because Even more so For now. himself. Because as from a player's perspective, you can tell when it's time to move on. You can tell in himself he doesn't look happy. You know, Marcus Rashford, unbelievable what he's done off the pitch. Nobody will ever, ever forget everything he's done for all those kids and those families. But it's the football now. Of course. You want to talk about the football. And when you look at it, if he goes to analyse his games, surely he must be thinking... I've not been good enough. Like, what warrants him to start in this game over an Alanga, over a Sancho, or a Bruno in the nine? I know he played in the nine, but at the same time, like, I don't think it's right for him to be saying this. It doesn't sound like it's just, yes, it's a report, but all these rumours that are coming out of Manchester United, there must be some truth behind some of them hmm. because it just keeps leaking and it's it's horrible being a Man United fan right now because so, not only are we playing poorly but all these things keep coming out of the club and Rashford needs to knuckle down and start playing better yeah so he's got I mean he's got to find a way Simon of yeah. getting in the team yeah but he's got to find a way of getting in the team yeah of course the onus shifts back to the individual you have to be given an environment you have to be given to coin a Jake LaMotta phrase you have to be given a stage where these particular balls can rage but by the same token he has to own the outcomes I'm of the belief that Rashford has been over pumped by the media as a player but notwithstanding that he's nowhere near the level that he was at he's before English. no and it's, and you look at it and say well things like a culture where you come back from the euros mm. you are injured you need to be have an operation and the manager's decides you can go away for another two weeks and come back when you're ready this is not the sort of culture that you build in an environment where you demand and expect from your players an understanding of who they're playing for. It was too easy ozy, and I think they've fallen into the trap. Aaron Wan-Bissaka has gone to Crystal... I'm moving off Rashford for a second, go back to him in a second. Gone to, from Crystal Palace to Man United, never been developed, is now a player that isn't good enough for Man United. No wonder Palace took the 50 uh, Of course they break their, arm off, the, yes. their arm off at the shoulder yeah. to get it in the first place. But by the same token, look at Rashford. And again, listen to Teddy Sheridan. I mean, I don't always see eye to eye with Teddy Sheridan. The only time we ever spoke was when his kid got a given an opportunity at Palace in my academy. Other than that, Teddy ignored me for years. And um, I might say, well done him. <laughs> but, yes. but the bottom line is, is, Teddy was talking about the responsibility for Marcus Rashford to understand where this lies and to get himself together rather than have his agent flapping his gums and create more division at Manchester United about what I'm entitled to. You're not entitled to anything. 
What you're entitled to is a fair shake, and what you do with that fair shake is entirely up to you. We saw a situation earlier on in the season, I'm forgetting the game it was against, and maybe you'll be able to recall it, Leanne, where he just capitulated during the game. Yeah. He got worse and worse and worse, and after half-time, he seemed to be completely out of sorts. And we were wondering what had been said to him in a dressing room by Ranjek at half-time, because he came out an absolute shadow of himself, and it was mm-hmm. almost as if he was, you know, folding inwards because yeah. of his confidence. Look, you know, no, no one... You know, criticizes Marcus Rashford for anything other than legitimate failings. That's right. And too many people in football want to praise, but they don't want to criticize. And too many footballers in this modern day can only be praised with with criticism if it's fair and justified criticism comes character building and Marcus Rashford should not be looking to leave Man United well Marcus where's he going to go though as well like, I don't think he gets in a but top four but you, but you advocate a moment ago you were advocating him leaving he should be getting hold and grasping the nettle and proving the point and earning the right to be back in that side rather than suggesting I'm not getting enough game time and it's everybody else's fault but mine I agree with you on that point but what I'm, my point was that I just don't think he's good enough anymore and I think but, you're right, he is overhyped because he's an English player, that's what we do. That may Everybody be hypes uh, him. I mean, you, but you're a bit I personally, good, yeah. enough, good enough anymore on what basis? Based uh, upon he hasn't lost a yard of pace. He hasn't lost any technical ability. No, nah, but lost Simon, he can't go approach. past players. It's not about pace, it's about his mind. When you watch him, he looks dejected. But he looks like he just doesn't look the same. And yes, you go through bad spells, but you can't like, he doesn't look like he's working hard. There was a time early on in the season as well, where if you followed in, something small, you'd have had a tap in. I think it was Wolves at Old Trafford. And he, all the Man United fans were like, oh, like they all sighed at the same time. Because everybody could see that you should have followed in. Yeah. Man United fans listening will say exactly yeah. the same thing. And those are the things that make me question. It's not necessarily, is he good enough from a footballer's perspective? I'm sure he's got all the ability when it comes to technique. So are you, technique. Ad- are you advocating that because of his psychological uh, disposition at this moment in time a change of environment will reawaken for himself for when I look at a player but, how, but where's it, who's going to sign Marcus Rashford in this current vein of form you, I mean they couldn't you know, look at, look at Deli Alley four years ago Tottenham <laughs> couldn't give him away to Everton right? and now where does Rashford go because if, he, if he's going to a lesser side how does that help him psychologically mm. he accepts the fact that he he's needs a lesser a change. player he needs a change you or can he needs see, to put himself together regardless of whether he's a Man United player or not I'm a Man United fan from a player's perspective from what I see I know in myself and I've not felt good at team you know how it feels. You need a bit of a change. You can go somewhere else and you can find your form again. Because but, at Manchester but if you United right at now... Man United, which, irrespective of their current level of attainment, right, is still the blue ribbon of football clubs. And the fact Jesse Lingard didn't leave when he should have. And there are very few places that you can go. You can, you can go to Man City and win things. You can go to Liverpool and win things. But you can't go to bigger environments, really, than Manchester United. Maybe Madrid and maybe Barcelona. But yeah. either one of those clubs are in great nick, irrespective of Madrid being top of the, of the league in, in La Liga... But what does it do for him by changing space into a, a lesser but he club? Obviously, but he doesn't think he's going to go to a lesser club, in my opinion. I think him having this type of opinion when he's playing so poorly shows me that he believes he could probably get into a top oh, team. Oh, yeah. I mean, which he, I think he, is delusional. If he's considering his future, Simon, he's clearly thinking, I'll go somewhere else. But, 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 maybe not is, quite on the level with United, he, but not he, far off Is it. he? I mean, are we getting intermediaries, getting people at it? Because as we well know, intermediaries, and by that I mean that ghastly species called the agent, the only way they're going to make any money is that they get in the middle of Rashford moving. Could well be. Could well be. That's why it's on the front of the Telegraph uh, sports section this morning. Rashford considers future as United slide into turmoil. I mean, we'll put it out there. And a lot of United fans getting in touch, incidentally. And uh, I'm interested in what I'm reading at the moment. Jeff, a Manchester United fan. Rashford lately plays like he's got boots on the wrong feet. <laughs> when he gets a ball, he always takes on one player too many and loses the ball. He's gone down, down the same route as Anthony Martial. So uh, apparently Rashford's considering his future. So if he considers that his future is elsewhere, as a United fan, would that bother you? Do you want him to stay? Or is it time up for him? 03717-2233-4889. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.